Hello everyone, this is Lessons Learned. I'm Sherry and this is our first tutorial of the Jolly Bar Book Sampler Row Quilt Sew Along. That's a mouthful. Alright, if you have not seen the introduction video, go back and watch it. It will be linked below. And then as we have more videos in this series, I will keep linking them as we go along so you don't have to go searching for them. There will be a playlist later if you do this later. So our first row is from the Jolly Bar book volume one and you will need to turn to page 20 and this is called Paper Hearts and we're going to do our first row out of hearts and if you remember a few weeks ago I actually made this pattern. I made it much bigger than what is portrayed here but I did it in lavenders and whites and it turned out really pretty so I wanted to start with that block I was well familiar with it from having done all those blocks so this is what we're starting with we're going to have hearts right on the top row so we're going to have a six hearts all together and each heart unlike this pattern layout will have sashing in between and we'll get to that in a minute so for this I had shown you I was going to use a dark background. You can use whatever background you want to use. And then I have a K Facet variety pack of fat quarters here. So if you remember me showing you these, these are just all sorts of his prints with, uh, all of them have some black in them, I believe. There is one that is blue instead of black. Now there's just a pink. And that's fine but most of them have some black so I think no matter how I make uh, how I use the fabric to make the blocks it will be well coordinated all the way through here is a purple one and a blue and pink a red and green not red pink and green and then here's the blue one I was talking about out of this pack I have three fat quarters that are strictly black and white and I'm going to pull these out and I am going to use them but I'm going to pull them out and use them very judiciously in this quilt so to make the first big black and white impact I am going to make half of my heart block in the black and white and the other half one of the colors so I'm going to go ahead and pull out three of these and I'm going to cut two pieces of each I'll do that in a minute uh, for the for one side of my heart so they will be all be on the right side or the left side is how I'm going to do it I'm not going to make them side by side so out of the prints I'm going to uh, eliminate a few right off the bat like these and these I want sort of a medium print like this so I'm going to do this one I'm not going to do this one I'm not going to do this one this one yes so you can see I'm picking the ones that have kind of a medium feel to it this one reads a little bit solid so I'm not going to use that I'll use this one I'm excited to use this one this is really cool this one not this one let's see how many I have one two three four I need two more so I'm gonna be really picky I think instead of this one I'm gonna use this one making a little bit of a mess here and then I need two more let's see let's go back and do this one and this one so all of these bigger ones are the ones that read a little bit more solid I'm going to leave those for my other blocks so that that's a clue for you right there how you might want to use your fabric in a way that's going to make sense at the end so that's that's that so let me show you my six pieces of fabric that I'm going to use for my heart blocks so kind of a medium high volume here 
and I'll mix these across as I make my blocks I will probably um, you know rearrange so there's that you can see how those all kind of meld together but they will have this on the other side yes they will be busy but this will stabilize somewhat these busy high volume prints here so you will see in the end how this comes together but that is where I'm going to start so what we have to do is ha we want uh, all of one side to be these three and the other six individuals for the other side so it doesn't matter when you're cutting your your pieces out to start with which side it is but it will matter when you go to do your background so uh, I will be right back with these cut up and also the the background pieces and we'll see how those go together I'm all cut and ready to go now listen up don't cut as many as it says to cut here because we're only making six and this is for a 20 block pattern so don't cut up a bunch of fabric like it says here so uh, as you can tell it's calling for one jolly bar and two solid charm packs so that gives you the idea of what sizes you need whether you're using a jolly bar or two charm packs so those of you who are using a layer cake and those of you who are using solids from your stash you may want to use some of that from for one side or the other of this not your background I'm not talking about your background I'm talking about extra fabric you may have brought in to go with your jolly bar or your charm pack so you know we're making a whole quilt but we're not making it all the blocks like this some of them are really big so there's no way to really I mean there's there's yes there's a mathematical way to calculate every inch of fabric that you will need but you know we don't really have to do that if we've got a stash of fabric and we have a charm pack or a layer cake or a jolly bar or a vega strip throw a little bit more from your stash in with that to use just in case but uh, you know using a jolly bar for this entire quilt pattern right here should kind of tell you that probably throughout the course of this entire quilt we won't use much more than that so don't cut how many it says here cut how many I'm getting ready to tell you right now so one half of your heart you need six and the other half you need six and that makes six blocks because it's a half a heart of these and a half a heart of these then you will need 12 of your big background squares which is the measurements are right here in the second section and 24 of the small background squares and that also is in this section right here so this is how it's going to go together oh and by the way I did put this one back in because the other print that was like this I couldn't tell if it was exactly the same print or not it looked too similar so I went ahead and brought this one back in I think that's a good choice so let me pull away uh, some of these so you can get a good idea of how this is going to go together let's see what do I want to put with this maybe this one and then these go with that so I have to decide if you're using all one color on one side you have to decide which side you want that on if you're just mixing them up it doesn't matter just make sure you don't have colors touching in the next block I mean they won't be touching because there'll be sashing but I wouldn't put like this as a heart and then go ahead and put this one over here like this you know what I mean so I'm just gonna be consistent and put all of my black and whites on the right and it does matter when you go to put this together which side you're sewing across in this diagonal fashion and you're starting to see that part right here so what's going to happen is one side of it 
you've got to make sure you're sewing this way and then the other side of it you got to make sure you're sewing this way and then also these you're going to have two on on the top of each one doesn't matter so you, those are going to get flipped out like this so it doesn't matter on those you're going to do it you're going to do the these two small blocks opposites on both the same way but these down here can trip you up if you're not careful when you go to sit down at your sewing machine so um, there's a couple different ways to do these are called sewing flips or stitching flips uh, I don't know there's probably other names for it too but what you want to do is go ahead and take these and you can do all of these at one time because you can turn it take these with a ruler that will go from one corner to the other and mark it and then when you mark that that mark will be up this is the right side of your fabric if you, there's a right and wrong side to your background you're going to sew on that line cut this off leaving a quarter of an inch and then press this over and there's the bottom of your heart if you've done these before you know you know what to do but if you haven't I'm going to give you a couple of tips about this first of all and another thing I want to mention if you're using a layer cake and it has pinked edges measure over the direct center of that layer cake to cut it in half because you're going to need every centimeter of your layer cake to be able to use to mix and match so make sure if you're one that just goes and cuts off the pinked edges be very careful about that because you do need to end up with a 10 inch square okay so back to this let me go get my chalk pen and I'll I'll show you how to make the mark I have this sew line and it's chalk it's white and I only use this when I'm using dark fabrics so again your ruler that's long enough to reach from corner to corner make your line there you go you see that if you have a very thin line like this and it's exactly on those corners sew right on the line if you have anything thicker than that just be aware that you may need to sew to the left of your line or to the right of your line depending on how it landed now when I get ready to sew these and then cut this part off and press I'm going to show you something else but uh, some people say to just go to the right of your line just barely to the right but still touching and that way you'll always get a perfect square there I don't do that because I tend to go too far to the right it's very hard to go up against that line rather than right on that line for me for some reason that's just me but if you do go just to the right and we're talking about the right side that's going to get cut off not the inside the outside so you can stitch right up next to your line touching it and it'll always come out exactly square but if you sew right on a very thin line you're gonna get you're gonna get relatively the same result hopefully with good pressing and all of that so we'll talk about it some more but I'm gonna go ahead and mark these and then uh, this one also you're gonna have to mark all of these now I use seam tape on the bed of my sewing machine which makes it where I really don't even have to mark these so these will go like that I'll go ahead and mark all of these up so you can see it 
before we get started sewing here and then you'll know what you should look like when you go to the sewing machine and then you could put this on a project board right from your your cutting table and then carry it straight over there and just start sewing that's ideal you can do that so here's my mark here I'm being very careful to make sure I'm going corner to corner and not making a crooked line you know if you've got a line that's drifting it's not gonna work it's not gonna come out very good you'll end up ripping that out and starting over again so this is what it should look like see our heart now all right now we're ready to sew so I'm going to transfer this onto a project board carry it to my machine and that way from here to there I won't have anything moving around or trying to carry it in my hand and then I drop it or I forget which angle I have it in my hand you know the the disasters that can happen so let's go over to the sewing machine and then I'll show you some stuff over there here I am at the machine and here's our little I picked up one of my little boards that I had and it was just the right size to put this on so I'm gonna lay this over here as facing me like I'm looking at it on a table which is basically what I'm doing I have my jazz 2 in here so have to think about what I'm doing um, here we go now you can um, seam glue this down you can pin it you can clip it and all of those good things to hold everything together if you want to I probably will I think just for the purposes of showing you I'll go ahead and just stick a pin in here just to hold those in place. I'm not going to do those first. I'm going to do this one. And here again, you can put a pin down here too. We're going to be sewing on this chalk line I put. And that's another thing. If you're using a light background, just use a lead pencil. I wouldn't go to the trouble to use it any of the colored pencils that either you iron away or the air takes it away you never know you know you could do all this marking and then you get called away and then all your marks are gone when you come back or there's some heat uh, variance in your room that causes your marks to, to go in and out of you so I have my um, quarter inch foot on but it is set to fall right inside of my foot there in that little hole so I'm just going to get right on it and drop my foot down and for this machine I have to hold on to this just very ever so slightly so that I can make one back stitch just to hold it in place and then if I didn't have the mark I would be following this line this red line if it's red on the seam tape that's the, that's the sew on line and then the two black lines on either side of it if you sew on those lines you're a quarter inch away so I use that all the time but today I'm doing it both ways so you can see in case you've not done this before I always do one little back stitch okay there's that and I'll cut my tail off here that's what I like about the brother machine I don't have to deal with the tails of the threads the jazz 2 is just a mechanical machine so here we are again doing the same thing but up on our smaller squares so make sure you've got your tails out of the way one little back stitch and just keep adjusting if you need to make sure that this is right next to this uh, edge these two pieces of fabric and just stay on your line or just barely less than a millimeter to the right of it like really less than a millimeter I don't even know what 
half a millimeter is. A nanometer? I don't know. I never learned metric very well. So there's that one, and then we have one more. Taking my pen out because I didn't have it in the right spot to start with anyway. So I'm trying to line up. Just be careful. Don't uh, just slap it down and start sewing. Make sure you you got your marks lined up. Just to be sure, you can take this and push it over and make sure that it's, once it gets over there, it's not hanging over the back side and it's not in too much like this. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but see that how you, you don't want to be able to see any of that background back there against this. So that looks pretty good. This one looks good. This one, let's see how I did. Because this is your only chance to fix it if it's if it's not quite right. Good enough. I'm a little bit short on this side, but I'm not gonna worry about it. It's not crooked is the main thing. It's straight on there. So now that we've verified that we don't need to make any changes or we choose not to make any changes, open them back up and then cut a quarter inch of the, away of the outside piece. If you cut the inside piece, you have to start all over again. Now I tell you what, it's hard to see on black. You can definitely take this back to the cutting table and use a ruler and your matte and OFA cutter to cut exactly a quarter. It's not imperative that it's a, it's a quarter just as long as, you know, you've got some seam allowance left on there. It's not gonna, that accuracy doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go to the iron and iron these and show you how I do that. Okay, this is a very weird angle, but I think you're gonna be able to see it better this way. This is what I do. What you don't want to do is just run in here and just start pushing up against this piece of fabric because at this point it's on the bias. Anything on the bias will stretch. So if you go banging into straight into it across here, you're going to make a big dip in it and it's not going to be square on the edges. So what I do is I hold it up and I just take the edge of my iron and lightly iron it just slightly right in that crack right there but I'm holding it up so I'm not putting any undue stress against this piece then once it's ironed then I take my iron and I lightly tease it over into place okay looks good now Okay, so same thing here. Just hold it up straight in the air. Take the edge, and better not the point. I, I tend to use the point some, but more like the top upper edge of your iron, like right here, where it's curved. And just bump up against it, and then lightly open it further, and tease it into place. Let's do one more. Hold it straight up. 90 degrees here. Take the edge of your iron and barely hold it up and then back over. And this is a good time too if you use a um, tailor's what is it called? A clapper? 
I have the clappers holding up my phone right now to, to film this, so I can't use one. But this would be a good time to use a clapper because I have one that's just a little bit. It might be that, uh, you know, I didn't do enough in the beginning to make that lay down. And you can lay your clapper on it. There's the first half of my first heart. So I'm going to do that same thing, but opposite on the bottom one. The, it's opposite, and it's on my um, project board over here, laying just like I had it on the cutting table. And I'll do the other side. And what's next? Joining them in the middle. So let's do that. All right, so I'm ready to join these two right down the center. So you want to make sure your little point here is lined up well and you don't have anything left at the top or bottom it should just come out perfectly you will get faster at these and more accurate as you go if you have a little inaccuracy don't worry too much about it we still have our quarter inch seam allowance that we can fiddle with to get things to line up well so I am going to go down through here and put the right sides together and stitch this right down the center and I'm going to take a pen and make sure everything stays where it's supposed to while I'm sewing. So I have one here at the bottom, one at the top, and then I definitely want one right here where these, where these two meet. And you can kind of feel, uh, I think the pattern wants you to put you know press one down and one up so I think I will I think I'll press this one down let me do that yeah we'll do that that's better and then that way they'll nest you can always press them all open and then it's a non-issue and you know that's what I normally do but for some reason I didn't do that when I was first showing you I'm really trying to get this to to feel right before I put the pen in. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to go up through here and sew it. Sew it together. Okay, cut this little tail off down here. Pull the pins out. And there's our block. I think I will definitely press this one open. See how back here I went ahead and pressed this one down and this one up. And that made it come out nesting in the center. So it doesn't matter which one you pick to do that with. But I'm going to open this one press it open with my fingernail first and then I'll go over there and to the iron and press it really good too and maybe use my clapper on it. After that I will make up the rest of them. You'll have five. Just remember if you're using something different on the other side and that matters in your design make sure you do the right side for the piece that is different or consistent through all. Okay, I'll see you soon. Do you have all your hearts constructed? Here's my six. We are going to now take some sashing and join these together. This is not in the book. This is what I'm telling you. And I will put these instructions, or at least the measurements, in the description box so you have some place to go to look for it but these are three inch by ten inch strips you need five you need one here one here and one here and the only reason I have this stretched out into two rows is because I don't have enough space here to show you here and here only on the interior 
do you need these you don't need them on the outside of your long row when it's together so you'll have this one going through here this is on this end of these three and then that's going to hook on to the end of this so in, at the end of it all you're going to have one entire long row uh, let me go ahead and sew these together and i'll try to move the camera up or maybe i'll put the row on the board something so you can see the whole entire row stitched together all right here's our row all put together but we want to total up to 70 inches for the length of our rows or the width length <laughs> anyway we need two coping strips on each end that are two and three quarters inches wide so that will total the 70 inches that we need so you can take a couple of your three inch strips that you used for the inner sashing and just take a quarter inch off of each one of those so those will be two and three quarter by 10 inches just add one to each end all right here is my first row it is complete it should be 70 inches long by 10 inches tall and remember you have two different widths for your sashing on this uh, the inner ones are three inches wide and the two outer ones are two and three quarter and that's how we come up with our 70. I wanted a an even number so that it's easy to do the math for all of the different rows that are going to be constructed so uh, all you need to do is uh, make these six hearts put those sashings on and you're done and I hope this gives you a, a good idea of what you can do with your fabric that you've chosen. Uh, if you have any questions at all, just leave them in the comments. You can also send me an email, however you want to communicate, and put your finished blocks or your first finished row on the Facebook group. And we'll just kind of have a lot of fun together that way. So come back next Wednesday for row two. And I'll give you a hint. We'll be making three large blocks with some sashing in between and you'll learn more about that. All right, have fun, and we'll see you soon. Bye.